Hey everyone, so today I want to touch on a, another Veeam deployment from a, another marketplace and in this instance it's going to be the AWS marketplace and it's in particular going to be around uh, Veeam backup for Microsoft Office 365. Uh, we haven't really done much shouting about where and how this is. I've done one on Azure and works absolutely fine and it's been getting some great hits and people are clearly using that uh, out there in the in the wild but Think about that option of being able to store your Office 365 backups in another public cloud or potentially just that management and that that uh, the way in which obviously we deal with the backups there. There's a couple of videos on that that I'll link as well. But obviously then we've got the, we can back up to object storage. So if you go into the marketplace, you've got two options for being backup for Microsoft Office 365. You have the paid for version. But as always, we also have that clap, that community edition, which gives you 10 free um, users, but also up to a terabyte of SharePoint data as well. So anyone that's got a home lab, anyone's running their own Office 365 at home um, or for demo purposes or for anything, that that's a perfect, perfect um, way of being able to protect that from a community. Big shout out to that is that everything that we do, it really has a community arm to it. But you'll also see some other stuff in here. So I've already covered Veeam Backup for AWS. There's also the free edition and the trial and the bring your own license and the paid edition. There's also VeeamPN. I've not done one on, I've not done anything on VeeamPN yet. Maybe we will if we get more, more interest. But what I'm going to do today is if we, if we go into here, in fact, let's kick it off and then we can, we can uh, go back and I'll show you. Basically, that in my EC2, I have nothing, nothing related. I have my Veeam backup for AWS, and I have a Project Martini, which is linked to Office 365 and an automated, let's say, a manager of managers that that give you um, the ability to deploy from a central location new instances of VBO. So, kind of a, a deployment model or a manager of managers. So, let's choose the uh, Community Edition continue to subscribe and this is super simple and what this is going to do is it's going to deploy a windows server 2019 box and it's also going to bring that that installation of veeam backup for microsoft office 365 now it's really not a hard hard setup at all um it's 30 meg maybe 35 meg that you uh that you that you download from veeam.com this is just showing another easy way of being able to quickly stand up a VBO server. So let's choose where we want that to go. Everything I'm doing is there. We've got our versions. So we just recently updated um, this image as well. So you see there last week, which is why we delayed the uh, the video. We wanna launch the cloud formation and then we get to choose a little bit more about how we want this to, to look. So we need to give it a name. So let's say VBA AWS, VBO AWS rather. We choose what system we want. Now this isn't gonna live for very long, so I'm just gonna choose a, a large chunky machine, but it's not gonna last because, and then I'm gonna choose a key pair. Now, I think there's a, there's a use case to have a key pair configured or a, a, a walkthrough of how you create this key pair because you need this at this point. This is how you're going to be able to access and get into that this new image. So I've created one called VBO AWS in my EC2 and maybe I'll touch on that as well. Do you want to automatically back it up using the lifecycle policies? Do you want to automatically restart if there's any software failures? Do you want to create an elastic IP? It's obviously going to depend on a lot of what you're trying to achieve. Um, let's just for this, and this, we would definitely not want anyone to do that, but this is going to allow anyone from anywhere to access that Windows 29 bo 2019 box over RDP. We're going to choose our VPC and subnet for that next. Now we can provide tags. Again, this is just a cloud formation template. This is just going to spin something up for you and it's going to deploy that tags are important in that we can then start to define policies that we want to to align to those tags things for like backups and and things like that um who do you want to have access to it well i've made that that um 
that key so I'm just going to use that to access but there might be other IAM roles that need access to that and a few more advanced and a bit of a summary of what we're going to do let's acknowledge that it's going to create some parts and this takes about three or four minutes so in the meantime I'm just going to jump into here again and kind of touch on key pairs so as you can see I've created a key pair but these are really quite simple and obviously you need to do this beforehand and I'm not saying I'm not AD, AWS uh, fluent by any means I'm, it's a part of my learning curve as well here but to create that key pair it's pretty simple in that we can use a key pair name we download either the PEM or the PPK and that creates that key pair so then when we have our EC2 instance that's spun up and I'm going to talk us through what that looks like when it comes back in is we use that um, PEM or the PPK to actually get the authentication into into that um, into that machine and then we can RDP using that administrator account and and so forth so that's really what I wanted to touch on with the key pairs it's really not difficult but that could be quite daunting if you're not familiar or live in here on a daily basis so okay so we've already seen that vbo hyphen aws01 is already deployed so we can we can now sit and just just wait for a bit until this this is uh this is now finished and you can start to see the deployment and of that stack and this is real time i'm not i'm not going to change the the editing for this because I want to show how quick it is to get you to a point where you've got a Windows 2019 box and a full deployment of Veeam Backup for Office 365 in AWS just before then you have to go and configure that and then my next video is actually going to be touching on a few things around well okay so we've done the day zero we've automated the deployment and we can do this in Azure we can do this um, in AWS as we're showing but really this this installation, like I said, it's 35 megs max. We could automate this all through. In fact, this is what the guys that created Project Martini, Niels and Timo, both work for Veeam, but a community project which allows them to leverage Terraform as an infrastructure as code to deploy that Windows machine and then deploy and install the, uh, the VBO aspect of that as well. So we should be looking pretty good and by the time the videos come out we won't be uh, exposing this IP anymore so once that's done then we can go connect and we can here this is why you need to download when you create that key pair you download that PEM file so uh, sorry right click get Windows password decrypt password still coming up so we just have to wait think yeah initializing there when that comes back up then we'll have the ability to do that and what we'll do is we'll point that to the pen file that I've got and then I'll delete the key before this video go comes up on on YouTube but just a, another side note here and I'll most likely link to to this as well either in the description or up in the top corner is what we did what we covered or what i covered at, at cloud field day a couple of weeks ago which was taking the it was actually using the azure marketplace for, from a microsoft perspective and deploying that day zero but then putting the jobs creating the organization doing all of that configuration which i know i've already covered as well but i had 30 minutes live demo end to end we started to protect user accounts, SharePoint, OneDrive for Business, Exchange Online, and had the jobs running. Now, obviously my organization is very small, one user in fact, but that whole configuration end to end took less than 30 minutes, as well as being able to uh, explain the uh, the components and, and everything that goes with it, the flow of the data. Okay, so right click, get Windows, password, not yet.
does look like it should be there. That's normally a pretty good sign that we're still waiting for that initial deployment to to initialize. I think this no data isn't the, the biggest win either. But if I was to take that and if I was to take that. Okay, so it's definitely up. Just for some reason, I can't get that the password for that machine. Let's just give it another couple of minutes. But I want to show, and this is just me being impatient by constantly clicking on that. This is just this is going to deploy that whole Windows 2019 box. It's going to install that VBO aspect of it, and then you're going to have a working machine where you can start to do. You create the organization. You create your backup repository local, which is where we store the cache and the metadata and you attach your object storage. Now this opens up a whole new door because, so from a Microsoft where we deployed it in Microsoft Azure, you can still use any object storage. So you could bring your AWS S3 bucket into an Azure VBO instance. You can bring that into an on-prem solution, etc. But this being able to now protect your Office 365 all from AWS and potentially leverage S3 buckets as well, opens up the door to really that multi-cloud or hybrid cloud way of being able to look after that data without storing all of your eggs in, in one basket, if you will. Yeah, here we go. So retrieving that default Windows administrator password. So what we need to do is we've got a key that we've created called VBO-AWS1 and I've downloaded that file somewhere. So we take that and we can just decrypt that password and we take that password and now if we go back to our remote desktop typically uh, so it's 18.222.177.12 so it's going to be administrator and it's going to be that password that we created and don't worry that will be gone by the time anyone tries to log into this machine but the uh, the other important thing and i've touched on this in many of the other vbo session videos or demo videos that i've done is just the simplicity of being able to spin this up and start protecting that workload but because of in version four, we gave the ability to offload those backups directly to object storage. We actually make, made this VBO server far more portable in that now we're only looking after 40, 50, 60 gigs worth of, of Windows operating system disk. So we can, if your VBO server lives in AWS for one month, and you decide that, oh, actually, I want this to be back on premises. You can move that using Veeam Backup for AWS, and then you get that into your external repository, and there's a whole new portability and way of being able to move that data, move that workload as to wherever you need that to be. So if we jump in here, so, I, so you saw in my EC2 instances, I didn't have this around 15 minutes ago. Now we've got it and it's got that full full installation now it comes up with the unlicensed product because obviously we chose 
the community edition, but you could, if you wanted to change from that community edition, maybe you got an NFR license for some further testing, it's still completely usable, up to 10 users. There's no addition, if you will, so there's no Enterprise Plus here, which means that oh, with community, you don't get that, you have to buy it. You get full functionality for 10, 10 users with the community edition. And this is this is now installed. Now, if we wanted, and I've done this on other video demos, we could run through adding that organization. We could run through creating that local backup repository, object storage repository, and then within here we can create the, the jobs as well. The other thing I'll mention is the upgrade. So whenever, and you'll see this in a few other of Veeam products now. I mentioned it for Veeam Backup for AWS which will not only update the obviously the Veeam software, but it will also update the um, underlying and operating system of the Ubuntu system that we deploy for VBA. Um, with VBR, you're going to see something similar as well. So being able to run these ad hoc checking for updates, and you can see here, okay, there's a new version already. Um, so we can run through and we can upgrade that all jobs are going to be off but the next thing that i want to show in the next video will be around okay so we've now got this base system in less than let's say 15 minutes i don't know how long the video demo has been going and we're fully up to date we're fully using the the latest version that we're that we have available at veeam and but now we actually need to do some configuration let's do some day one and beyond on well how do we set up our organization how do we do that and obviously we could do that through the ui and many of our customers will do that but what they'll also want to be able to do is well how do you automate that how do you leverage the restful api or how do you leverage powershell to be able to create or add your organization how do we add your backup jobs how do we do this and that's exactly what we've what we've achieved and what we'll show in that next next video but any comments if i'm missing anything around especially like so obviously being back up for office 365 but also think about um if there's a there's a explanation that you potentially cannot find in the user guides or there's a scenario that you want to play out um yeah just let me know in the comments below and we'll we'll make it happen